Hello everyone and welcome to another recommends video. In this video we'll be doing a new series and the series is called Remembrance of Earth's Past but it is known as the Three Body Problem Trilogy. This video will deal with the first novel The Three Body Problem which was written by Cixin Liu and originally published in China in 2008. Before we begin please subscribe, give us a like, drop us a comment and now let's begin. At Tsinghua University, the final victim of the struggle session was brought forth. His name was Yi Zetai. He did not repent, he did not kill himself, and he did not become numb. Six Red Guard members led him before the crowd, two young men and four young women. The two young men were students of his, and the four young women were from the high school that was attached to the university. He was wearing a heavy iron hat on his head and a heavy iron plaque around his neck. As they tried to get him to renounce the scientific theories that he has been teaching, they failed, so they brought out a new weapon, his wife, physics professor Shaolin. And she denounced him, stating her intentions to stand with the revolution and the people. She went on to denounce Einstein's theories of relativity and general relativity. She went on to denounce him because he lectured students on the Copenhagen interpretation of quantum mechanics. He, of course, answered logically defending the scientific method and the theories. That's when the four girls rushed forward and began hitting him in the head with belt buckles, eventually killing him. That's when his wife's mind snapped and she began a loud crackling laugh. This time the crowd was watching all left, leaving just one young woman behind. Her name was Yi Wenjie. She was his daughter, and two old university janitors held her and kept her from interfering. She watched her father's body for a while, then she went up and held his hands. When they came to take the body away, she put his pipe in his hand. As she headed home, she could hear crazy laughter coming from the second room of her home. It was the woman she had once called her mother. She then went to the home of her advisor and closest friend, Yuan Wen but she was also dead. UNJ was helping to chop down trees as a member of the Inner Mongolia Production and Construction Corps. That's where she met Bai Mulin, who was the call newspaper reporter. He began speaking with her and eventually offered her a book that he said he got from his higher ups. The name of the book was Silent Spring and it was written by Rachel Carson. He then warned her to be careful and don't let anyone see it. This book was to have a major influence on Yu Wenjie's life. Four days later, she came and gave him the book back. That's when he asked her for help in writing a letter to his higher-ups about what's going on with the construction corps. Three weeks later, she was pulled in before the company commander and the political instructor. Apparently, Bai Mulin blamed her for writing the letter and said that she stole the book and had wrote the letter on her own. So she was in prison for sedition. Later, two people came to visit her in her cell. They wanted her to sign a document implicating her father. The document had already been signed by her sister, who died two years before. When she refused to sign, they dumped a bucket of cold ice water on her and left. When she next came through, she was in a helicopter headed for the Red Coast base with two men, political commissar Le Jiesheng and Yang Wenging, who was once her, her father's student. Yang warned her that if she joins this base, she'd probably be here for the rest of her life. She could refuse and she'd be in prison for six to seven years before she's freed. She told him that she wanted to join. And while she was there waiting to be settled, she watched as the base conducted an experiment, a transmission experiment that ended up knocking birds out of the sky. Wang Miao was visited by four men who invited him to the battle command center. One of the men was Captain Shi Jiang. The person in charge of the battle command center was Major General Chang Wei In the battle center, half the attendees were military officers. There were some police, a few academics, and some prominent scientists. Also in attendance was four foreigners, a US Air Force Colonel, a British Army Colonel, and two CIA officers. Also at the meeting was Captain Shi Jiang. 
Xi Jinping complained that although they've been part of the battle center for some time, they still don't know what's going on. What the general did say that gave Wang pause was that of all the combat zones around the world, this one has become the focal point. The general seemed to be talking that there was a major war going on, but Wang didn't know what kind of war he was talking about. Where was this war? The general goes on to say recently the enemy has intensified the pattern of attacks. The targets remain elite scientists. They were handed a list of names of scientists that had recently died because of enemy action, and he recognized one of the names on the list, a young theoretical scientist whose name is Yang Dong. All the scientists on the list, including her, had killed themselves in the last two months. The general wanted Wang to accept an invitation from an organization called the Frontiers of Science and be the command center's man in that organization. At first, Wang refused, but she adored him so much that he changed his mind. The last thing the general told Wang as he was being escorted out was the entire history of humankind have been fortunate from the stone age until now. No real crisis has occurred, but we've been lucky. But if it's all luck, then it has to end one day. Let me tell you, it's ended. Prepare for the worst. When Wang left the battle command center, he went to visit Deng Yi, who was a fellow researcher and in love with Yang Dong. Ding Yi told him that the reason Yang Dong killed herself was that experiments from particle accelerators proved that the laws of physics that could be applied anywhere in the universe do not exist, which means that physics do not exist. The next day, Wang, who is an amateur photographer, went out and began taking pictures. And as he develops the pictures, he noticed that there's a countdown happening on every picture he took but the countdown only appears on pictures he takes. So in order to get help, he called one of the members of the Frontiers of Science, Dr. Shen Yufei. When he gets to her place, she listens to him carefully, and then she asks him one question. How is the nanomaterial project that he's leading proceeding? When he asks, what has that got to do with this? She says, stop your research. And that's all she would say, just stop, try it. And as he was leaving, as he got into the cab, another member of the Frontiers of Science, Pan Han, showed up. And he, and he spoke to Shen, telling her, you, I have to warn him and also warn you, do not force our hand. Wang, by the next day, was beginning to see the countdown everywhere he looked. He went to the doctor for a checkup, but there was nothing wrong with him. When he got to his work, he stopped the nanotechnology experiment for maintenance, and that's when the countdown stopped. He then contacted Shen. By then, he knew she had something to do with it, and she told him that she was trying to avoid him having the same fate as Yang Dong. He challenged her to do it on a grander scale, and she asked him, when is he going to turn back on the experiment? He told her three days from now, and she said that on the 14th, between 1 and 5 in the morning, the entire universe will flicker for you. When Wang got back to his office, he spoke to Deng Yi on the phone, and then he sat down at his computer desk and began to think about Shen Yufei. When he saw her at her house, she was playing a computer game, and she's not the type to play computer games in his mind, so he wanted to see what sort of game she would play. He remembered the address, and it was www.treebody.net. When he went to the website, it told him that the game was only accessible via a V-suit. So he got a V-suit from his employee lounge, got into it, and then logged into the game. Once he got into the game, he found himself in a desolate plain. There was lots of stars in the sky and a sliver of white light on the horizon. He created an ID for himself called Hyren. In the game, he found himself in the chaotic era. And he and two traveling companions were headed to the city of Jiaoji. The people on this planet would dehydrate during the chaotic era and rehydrate during a stable era. When they dehydrate, all liquid would leave their bodies and they would become like leather. And all they'd have to do to rehydrate is to be dipped in water and they would return to their normal self. Civilization only develops on this planet during a stable era. The goal of the game is to analyze all phenomena until they know the pattern of the sun's movement because the survival of civilization depends on it. 
at the end of the game, there was a line of text that said, the long night lasted 48 years. Civilization number 137 was destroyed by the extreme cold. This civilization had advanced to the warring states period before succumbing. The seed of civilization remains. It will germinate and again progress through the unpredictable world of tree body. We invite you to log on in the future. And with that, Wang left the game. Once Wang left the game, he wanted to figure out why the planet's orbit was so chaotic. He felt that the three stars had something to do with it. But he was on his way to visit Yang Dong's mother, Yi Wenjie. When Wang visited Yi, he found her taking care of her neighbor's kids. He was able to visit Yang Dong's room and get the information he was looking for, a place with which to observe the cosmic microwave background radiation. Yi made the calls for him so he could go and visit. He was so pleased at meeting Yi that he promised to come and visit again. Wang went to the Chinese Academy of Sciences National Astronomical Center where he met with Xiao Shan, who was Yi's student and was happy to show him around. And while they were waiting for one o'clock, the time when Shan told Wang that the universe would flicker, Xia spent that time telling Wang about Professor Yi's history, how she saw her father die and how she was falsely accused at the production and construction corps and how she seemingly disappeared until her return to Beijing at the beginning of the 90s when she began teaching astrophysics at the same university that her father taught at. It was only recently that the information came out that she spent more than 20 years working at the Red Coast base. And exactly on time, the microwave background flickered. She, of course, was stunned, but Wang convinced him that he should not pursue it because he probably wouldn't get anywhere. He next went to the planetarium and used their 3K glasses and he was able to see it for himself. He then called Shen Yufei and he asked her what happens at the end of the countdown. She said, I don't know, and she hung up. Wang went and sat in front of St. Joseph Church and when he was ready to leave, Captain Shi met him there. Well, Wang spoke to Captain Shi, went and had a couple drinks with him and he explained to the captain what he knew. And the captain does not believe that the universe is blinking. He thinks whenever something strange is happening, someone is behind it. He believes that there's an attack going on on theoretical sciences and theoretical scientists. He also knows that most of the world governments are afraid and working together on something against some enemy that they're afraid of. When Wang told him that he's not a theoretical scientist, but she told him that whatever he's working on, whoever is behind this is afraid of it and he should keep on working on it. He also thinks that they should keep on playing that game, the tree body, because he thinks it's somehow tied into everything that's going on. So Wang went and bought a V-suit, then made some calls promising to go back to work tomorrow and then logged in to the game tree body. When Wang got back into the game, 362,000 years had passed and four civilizations. Civilization number 139 had developed all the way to the steam age before it collapsed because of the chaotic era. Wang spent some time in the game, but eventually he lost and the text appeared at the end of the game. Civilization number 141 fell into ruin in flames. This civilization had advanced to the Eastern Han period. The seed of civilization remains. It will germinate and again progress through the unpredictable world of the tree body. We invite you to log on in the future. Wang, now out of the game, began to think that the game was depicting something real. So Wang went back to work the next day and at the end of the day he went to visit Yi and she began to tell him about her days at the Red Coast base. When Yi Wenjie had gotten to the Red Coast base she worked there first in the transmission department but after a while Commissar Lee liked her and moved her to the monitoring department which she later found out was more like the heart of the Red Coast base. The monitoring department had a more sophisticated and sensitive radio receiver. It also had a bigger and more complex computer system. 
Then Commissar Lei explained to Yi why she was picked to come here. Apparently, while she was in college, she wrote a paper that she researched on solo activity. And among the Chinese scholars, her predictive model turned out to be the most accurate. So the Commissar liked her and trusted her, but Chief Yang did not yet trust her. Then one day, two army officials came and told her that they got permission to tell her the true nature of the Red Coast base. It turns out that the commissar had been lying to her all this time, and now Chief Yang was going to let her in on the reason for the Red Coast base. It turns out that the true purpose of the Red Coast base was to monitor for extraterrestrial communications from a 1000 light year circle around Earth and to transmit and if possible establish communications to an extraterrestrial civilization in a 200 light year circle around Earth. The belief being that the nation that accomplished this first will get a technological jump on all the other nations. Yi finished telling Wang how the Red Base slowly died and that by the 80s it had been decommissioned. Four years after getting to the base, she married Wang Yining. Then later, an accident at the base killed both Yang and Li. And her daughter, Yang Dong, was born after her father's death. And of course, she told him they never discovered any extraterrestrial communications. Once Wang left Yi's home, he got home and he got into his V-suit and logged into the three-body game. He also created a new login ID, Copernicus. In the game, although he explained the fact that the planet orbited three suns, he still lost the game. And at the end, the game text read, Civilization number 183 was destroyed by a trisolar day. This civilization had advanced to the Middle Ages. After a long time, life and civilization will begin again and progress once more through the unpredictable world of tree body. But in this civilization, Copernicus successfully revealed the basic structure of the universe. The civilization of the tree body will take its first leap. The game has now entered the second level. We invite you to log on to the second level of tree body. When he logged out of the game, Wang got a call from Captain Shi, who wanted to see him right away. So that's where he headed. When he got there, she was with two people. A young police officer, she said her name was Zhu Bing Bing, a computer specialist. And the other person was Wei Sheng, who was the husband of Shen Yufei. She told Wang he needed his advice, and then he told Wei Sheng to tell him what you told me. Wei said, my life is in danger, and he began his story. Wei is a mathematical genius. He's one of those people who can figure out the solution to any mathematical problem or equation just by seeing it in his head. And over time, he began working on the three-body problem, a real solution to the three-body problem. And later on, he met his wife, Shen Yufei, and she married him because she wants him to continue and to solve the three-body problem. Well, a few days ago, he got a call from someone who said if he continued working on the three-body problem solution, they would kill him. Then later that night, he woke up with his wife pointing a gun in his face, telling him if he stopped working on the three-body problem, she will kill him. She told him, if you succeed in solving the three-body problem, you will be the savior of the world. If you stop now, you'll be a sinner. If someone were to save or destroy the human race, then your possible contribution or sin would be exactly twice as much as his. Then they all packed up into two police cars and headed to Wei's house. When they got there, they found that his wife, Shen, had been killed. She was shot three times and she got off two shots of her own, but the killer had just escaped. Wei told them that he heard his wife arguing with Pan Han just the day before. Pan Han said, although it seems like we are fellow travelers on the surface, in reality, we are irreconcilable enemies. Shen then told him, yes, you're trying to use our Lord's power against the human race. Pan said, your understanding is not complete unreasonable. We want our Lord to end this world to punish those who have long deserved it. 
However, you're working to prevent our Lord coming. And that's why we can't tolerate you. If you don't stop, we'll make you stop. Shen then said, the commander was blind to allow you to join the organization. Pan said, speaking of which, can you tell whether the commander sides with the Adventists or the Redemptionists? Does the commander want humanity eliminated or saved? When they were alone, Wang asked Wei for a outline of his three-body evolutionary algorithm, and Wei handed him a CD telling him it's all on there. Wei then told Wang that he should publish it under his own name. That would be a big help. He went on to tell Wang that you're a good man with a sense of responsibility. That's why he's counseling him to stay away from this. The world is about to change and everyone should try to live out the rest of their lives in peace. When Wang told him, you seem to know even more than you're letting on, he said, I spent every day with her. It's impossible not to have an inkling. When he said, why don't you tell the police? He said, the police are worthless. Even if God were here, it would do no good. The entire human race has reached a point where no one is listening to their prayers. He goes on to say that it's all because God or the Lord she talked about can't even protect himself anymore. That's it for now. The second part of the book, The Tree Body Problem, will be in an upcoming video. I want to thank you for watching and listening. Subscribe if you haven't. Give us a like, drop us a comment, and I will see you in the next video.